everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, it's, it's an amazing time. It's an amazing time for so many reasons. It seems like there's tremendous tragedies and travesties and injustices and killings and maimings and ethnic cleansings and just brutality upon brutality and humiliation upon humiliation in so many places on this planet Earth at this time. But as we've said before, what time hasn't there been in some way? What is about this human experience, this human experiment that allows us to treat ourselves and each other with so little love and respect, so little dignity. And in our heart of hearts we know. It's because we don't know that one love, that truth, that God, that infinite quality, that oneness that we talk about so much that was in the poem at the opening. And that in our heart of hearts, in the middle of the night, whatever age, whatever race, whatever religion, whatever country, whatever anything, we know that there is the love, the oneness, the God, the truth, the way, the Tao, however you describe it, however your tradition, your history, your country allows that, your religion allows that to come through. But behind or, or further or further up and further in or however you describe it, there is a root to this human life. There is a root to life. And in that root, all the differences that create seeming differences, that create the indignities and the, the humiliations and the wars and the, the fights over pieces of land don't exist. We would recognize that we're all truly brothers and sisters, that we're all one. Just different parts, different flavors of that one. And then wouldn't things be different then? And isn't it time? We all know it is. I mean, this, this, the stupidity of, of what goes on, the stupidity of war after war and fighting over oil, fighting over land, fighting over religion, fighting over, fighting over, fighting over, fighting over. It's endless, isn't it, seemingly? And yet there is an end. There's an end when the love is there. So however we know how to do it, each of us in our own way, isn't it time and time and time and time and time again to take that next commitment, that next step, that next recognition into that love of the one, into that experience of the one, of the truth. And again, you know, that's why we come together. That's what this bridging show is about. You have somebody again who's dedicated his life to knowing that love and sharing it. And that's what the human life is about, to experience that love and to share it. Um, Cam Yoon is a, a Kung Fu, he's a Tai Chi master. He, as a matter of fact, was the model for the Kane character in that Kung Fu series with David Carradine, which was one of my favorite shows nowadays <laughs> with Grasshopper. I just loved it because it had that heart, it had that connection. He's a doctor of chiropractic, he's a nutritionalist, he's an herbalist, he's the author of numerous books including Instant Healing, Instant Rejuvenation. He's a developer of the U Method of Energetic Healing, whose purpose is to teach healing to everyone who wants to learn, to learn the gifts he's been given, the, the energy and the effort that he's put in to know that love. And in everything I've seen about him, he always talks about that stillness, that internal knowing, that internal surrender. Love, God, truth. And we're going to see some videos, some extraordinary videos that uh, Cam has done with, with David Carradine. And it's an opportunity. And, and also, 
we're going to have some, you know, healings on the show, on tonight, live, as we do them. And if you're watching in the Santa Barbara area, when we're taping the show live, which is uh, <laughs> some year, no, May 7th, 2004, there'll be, um, Master Yoon will be doing healings this whole next week or two in the Santa Barbara and Ojai area. If you want any information, you know, take the number down when it passes through, I'll give it to you at the end. But there's an opportunity for us all to once again commit, commit again, commit again, and commit again to love. And isn't that what we want? So let's start tonight's show. We'll do a short meditation just to get us settled in. Then we'll have the first video, and then we'll have Cam on the set, and then we'll have another video, and then we'll have healings. And it's, it's an opportunity. So settle in. The first video section we're going to see tonight is a video that uh, uh, Cam uh, did with David Carradine. Uh, and just watch the, the majesty of the forms and the movements that demonstrated by Cam and his students. So it's a Kung Fu video. Kung Fu was so highly valued in the Orient that for centuries the Sifus, the great masters of the art, refused to reveal the secrets of Kung Fu. Only recently have the most progressive Sifus brought Kung Fu to the West, realizing that its true destiny was to spread its wisdom to all the world. I met Sifu Kam Yuen while working on the TV series Kung Fu. He served as our technical consultant. I portrayed a Kung Fu monk in the series. But it was Cam who trained me in the complex Kung Fu moves that I performed myself. Most importantly though, he showed me how Kung Fu could be applied to all aspects of my life. He became my Sifu. To this day, I still find new ways to apply the principles of Kung Fu. Sifu Cam Yuen and I will guide you through the workout and with the help of our class members, we will demonstrate the ancient techniques and extraordinary powers of Kung Fu. Kung Fu training is divided into stages, where each stage builds upon the preceding stage. The first section is the snake, which involves stretching exercises for the entire body. The second stage, the tiger, consists of basic stances and footwork. These postures are designed to keep the body centered and balanced. The third stage, the leopard, involves kicking exercises that require flexibility and an understanding of the stances. The fourth stage, the crane, combines kicks, stances, and upper body movements to form traditional northern Shaolin combination exercises. The final stage is the dragon. This section goes beyond the physical level and explores the mental aspects of Kung Fu. The experience of this stage is essential to fully encompass the benefits of the art. Wow, we're on the set. That was beautiful. Welcome. Thank you. I'm glad you could come. I'm happy to be here. So when did you realize uh, the deeper aspect of Kung Fu. I mean, you were studying this a long time. Was that made clear to you with your sense eyes of your teachers from the very beginning, or? Well, they tried to make it clear to me, but I was kind of dense. So <laughs> I didn't get it till later on in life. Before, the, it was mostly it's more martial. Right. So did you start at a really young age? I kind of dabbed into it when I was young, but then, you know, I kind of be like, more Western, so I kind of got away from that for a while. 
So when did you come back and you know, you, you know, really uh, like dedicate your life to to being a kung fu and a qigong master, Tai Chi? Um, actually, when I finished college. Really, it was that yes. late? Wow. Um, so, but then once you took it up again, it was just you felt really. Well, I felt with? that uh, that I have to be a teacher at that time because um, at that time the Chinese immigrant didn't speak English that much, and there was. They were not in a position to teach the martial arts, especially the Chinese martial arts, uh, like the Japanese and the Korean was doing it. So I just felt that I should do it. And so, basically, out of the clear blue, you said I'm going to be a martial arts master. <laughs> That's fantastic. And then I spent time, you know, uh, training and learning. And um, actually, you know, I was training other sports. You know, I was like, a, I was doing track and field, so I was in great shape. And then I took ballet and figure skating and things like that that helped me a lot in, in my movements. And at that time, you know, I was an engineer, so I didn't really have any interest at first to, to teach, and then and I felt like I was chosen to do so. I mean, was that like one flash you got? Was it like an epiphany, or was it just over I got hit on the head. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We've had stories like that, as you could imagine. How did that happen for you? Uh, well, I just felt, you know, I just felt that uh, at that time I, I need to do something for for being Chinese, and you know, because at that time uh, Chinese wasn't doing too much in this country. You know, we were just open restaurants and laundry. And so. <laughs> right. So it was. So that was the third choice, right? Being a yeah. martial artist is a restaurant or a laundry. The other two didn't seem so good. Well, I was an engineer, but uh, I didn't like that, so right. it was just too boring for me. So. Uh -huh. And so, how long did it take you to get to the place where, you know, you were a teacher and then you were a master and then you started working, you know, with the Kung Fu series? And... It took me a while. It took me like almost 10 years. And I trained all the time at that time because, like I said, I was in track and field, so I got a lot of endurance. So. Uh, I was used to working out, you know, hard physically. At, at, at certain point, did you, besides feeling it was your calling, what you needed to do, was that that you just loved it so much, you just wanted to do it? Well, I never, never got to. I, I thought I it was my mission, so so that was really intense. So I I didn't really love it. Wow, interesting. That's interesting. I just felt I, it was something for me to do. Wow. And so, how did you come to be involved with the? With the Kung Fu series, it's really that was one of my favorites. It still is. <laughs> when, when they came out with it, they you know they just came out with a DVD and you got for a the first season. Well, I haven't gotten it yet, but <laughs> I, I did think about getting. I looked for it at Costco the other day. They didn't have it. You got it. Twenty ran out. Because when yeah. I went there, they got a whole bunch of them. So, seriously? Yeah. Oh, seriously. fantastic. So, uh, what was your question again? When? How long? Did, when did you get involved, and how did you uh, get involved with that? Well. I just took it up and, you know, did a lot of heavy training, you know, I mean, when I got serious about it, you know, I trained like 10 hours a day on it, so. And then David Carradine became a student of yours, was that? Oh, actually, uh, we were, in fact, a lot of Kung Fu instructors and the martial arts, uh, other martial arts got invited to, to the, uh, uh, to Warner Brothers when they tried to uh, do the show, so they just talked to us and selected us and. So I was just chosen among a whole bunch oh, of other see. martial arts That's people. how it came to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. And when did you start getting into the healing aspects and the, the stillness aspects? When did that start to become real for you? Well, I got into the stillness first. So I didn't know what to do, so I just stayed still with it. Wow. So uh, the healing, you know, didn't take place till later on. To, for a while, I didn't, I didn't have any desire to heal anybody. In fact, I just want to make people afraid of me. <laughs> That's a start. <laughs> Thank God you got out of that phase. Yes, I got out of that. <laughs> that would have been... Well, that's part of the martial arts, you know. Especially when you're younger, you have that ego thing, and so we kind of got away from that. Right. And so, again, was there some moment where you realized, like, you know, <laughs> there's something more here than I could, you know, really take this and there's really some meaning to this that I had missed before, that I'd, I'd heard about, but now it actually means something to me? Well, I heard about all those principles and, you know, it just kind of gone in one ear, came out the other, so. And uh, I was in the physical aspect of it more so 
and then uh, I started to have a desire to uh, to heal anybody. I thought I was kind of boring to heal anybody, even though my teacher was a very good healer, uh, acupuncturist, and herbalist, and I just learned from him from os osmosis. You know, I mean, I didn't intend to learn it. Uh huh. It's just That's like interesting. Yeah. Just like you're in the kitchen, you just learn how to cook just by being there. Uh huh. And so, when did you start, you know, saying to people, "Well, would you like to come to a healing?" Well, I never say that. <laughs> there, somebody's saying it for you now because yeah. I see ads everywhere. So, it's, <laughs> well, I just said it. Yes, <laughs> they made me say it. Oh my God! So, I mean, I always want to, um, you know, improve the person. Um, fitness so or relaxation and get the most out of their body and their mind so it's just led into you know making someone feel better oh they, then they got healed so so I think healer you know it's just the word healer is kind of like uh, it didn't appeal to me because it's kind of passive you know mm -hmm. just waiting mm -hmm. for things to happen right so I mean then you started the the energetic healing method that teaches people to basically be strong, be empowered, be inspired, and in a sense, heal themselves or be in a healing mode or something? Well, you could use the energy to change the first, a person's physical body, and then you use the energy to actually change their, their mind, you know, the way they think and how, how they feel spiritually. So you make them strong to what they want. So the energy support what they want instead of uh, going the opposite direction. So when you when you start to do a healing now or a, a readjustment or whatever word we'll decide to use for now, do you, do you see something? Do you see a disharmony? Do you feel it? Do you? I mean, well, so mostly feel it you because feel it's so much faster to feel it than to see it. So you close your eyes, or or you could be totally blind and be able to do it. That's where that character came from. I love that character. The scene That's where the he says, yeah. how, "How is it that you do not?" When he asked him if, in the opening, if he could hear the, the frog or the, the cricket, the cricket, right? And he said, "How is it that you do not?" And that's you know, because our senses are closed, and when mm -hmm. your senses are open, right. so, so basically, at this point, you go around the world, just bringing these energetic methods and tools to people, mm -hmm. so that they can experience their own glory, their own stillness, and. Well, you know, I want to show them how ridiculous for them to uh, have pain and suffer. So I just give you the pain on the spot so they can't complain about anything. Well, I, I, humans have been known to complain just about everything. So it's, uh, if you could get rid of complaining, we, we would be... Well, at least maybe we could start that tonight and get rid of all the complaining. That would be a good start. That would be a successful show, would you say? Oh, definitely. <laughs> So, and, and you really enjoy doing it now. I mean, just seeing people get un. Oh, yeah, I have fun unheard. doing it. Yeah. It's actually hilarious. Uh, Explain that. What do you mean? Well, you know, the reason why they have to paint it is, is, is very hilarious. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? So, most of the time when someone have a pain, you know, it's, it's not really coming where they think it's coming from, or whatever bothers them is not what really bothers them, it's really something else. And once you pinpoint that, you actually, uh, when you get to the basic fundamental truth, then you resolve whatever ails them. If you could say, what is the, the one fundamental truth or the one place that more people, you know, mo or a lot of people have as a, 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 a disharmony or a misunderstanding that creates these things? Well, it could be on any level. I mean, it could be how they think and how they emotionalize and how psychotic they are. Psychotic. <laughs> and also, uh, you know, they have psychic influences as well as spiritual influences. Or the combination of those things. Uh, you could have like uh, one level that's not bother them, but if you have like mental, emotional, spiritual, you combine three things that could possibly bother them. And that'll result in a disharmony that'll manifest in the physical body. Oh, definitely. They, they're not going to feel at ease about their life, so they develop a disease. So by clearing this aspect of it, it'll move into ease, the right, less you make, this ease. You make them feel at ease about everything. So that way, even if they have a serious disease, uh, that serious disease would not feel bad to them. In fact, it feels stronger than, than the disease. So, so it's like by releasing those root places, you're almost like 
bringing energy to places and, in a sense, strengthening the immune system? Well, the energy is already there. We just right. have to unblock the, the blockages. And do the blockages come in, in, in like everywhere in a human being, or are there places that are more apt to be blocked because of certain factors in this human life in this 21st century? Well, they come from their family, ancestors, the type of work they do, or could be money, finances, relationships. The usuals. Yeah, the, usuals. the common everyday uh, issues. And so when you see this, you're, you're feeling this disharmony. And, and how do you use your ability to, to manifest energy, to move energy, to release it. And, and when you do release it, this will be a nine-part question. <laughs> uh, and when you do release it, what prevents it from that momentum or that habit pattern coming back and creating the same type of thing? Well, if it comes back, then we have to recognize the reason why a person bring it back. Because a person's conscious mind could bring it back. A person still could have free will to think, uh, to rethink about it. and we invent it and we experiencing it. So we have to cast them doing that and then stop them at, at their tracks. So their conscious mind will support them 100%, 100% of the time instead of like some of the time. So, so you've seen in your experience with thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that, that people are capable of having, of changing the momentum of their lives almost instantaneously. Well, it has to be instantaneously, otherwise, uh, something's wrong, it's too slow. It's just like having a computer, you don't want a computer to be slow, so... So you you're, have you're a tape. DSL line, or so you're, you're the cable modem of... Uh -huh. and, and you find that that allows people to come in behind that because they experience it right away, so they know right away that something is happening. Yeah, they have to experience right away, otherwise you will argue with you it didn't happen. So it okay. has to be crystal clear, right? And no one can say anything. And so, does this happen with like uh, all levels of disease? I mean, like like the bad cancers, the you know the the, the big C, the you know all the types of you know lungs filling up with things. I mean, do all of them have the potential to be this instantaneous healing or rejuvenation? Oh, definitely. If we know what's going on, you can actually resolve it. Um, I said before. It would have disease bothered the person, and the person um, no longer feel at, not at ease about it, uh, then they'd be okay. See, if they feel at ease about their disease, then their recovery time would be so much quicker than they feel bad about it all the time. So would you say they're, because of someone's habit pattern or someone's uh, not willing to let go, that that's, you could come in and, and do whatever techniques you would do that and it wouldn't affect them at all they would still argue with you they would still hurt well they probably argue less and they hurt less um, they would get in touch with themselves and they'd be more at ease with themselves and with their environments and everything else so they have less issues in their life they have less triggers and they make better choices so it, it, at, at, bet, at worst, it just slows down the momentum. At best, it can be healed and, and never, in a way, return. But it, even at worst, it, it, just, it will change the momentum to a certain extent. Oh, definitely. Uh, there would be improvement, and the person may not be aware of the improvement. So you have to look at that and change the energy so they become more aware of what's going on. So because people you know have a tendency to, to be habitual and you know be a little gross and stubborn and you know things like that does it take normally a few sessions for for more uh, complex diseases or situations well they may have more problems than we have time for so so it might take another session or uh, it's just like improving what you have right? you, you get better you want to get better than better so it's always room for improvement. So let's say someone have a neck problem, you get rid of the pain, now you want to spend time in improving their flexibility, range of motion, so they feel lighter with their body. So it's always room for improvement. So not just their body, but how they think, how they emotionalize. And, and so do you do this with like, that you 
move energy through them? I mean, do you consciously, when you see a, a disharmony or a blockage, and you do you move your hands over it? Which, how, how you know, how would you do it, or would it be different? Well, every time? it's just a men mental thought, so um, it's, it's non-touch. You know, I don't have to move my hands. So you're actually able to do this work if you don't have any hands. You know, you get your hand chop off, you still be able to do it. And could you do this? Remotely, can you do this over the telephone? Oh, definitely. You do over the telephone, or or just think about a person. You could do it, and also you could do it for for pets and animals. So it's not just people. You do it for infants or uh, the dropping feeders. So before they're born, so you you can actually any time and do it anywhere. It's not limited by time and space. Because energy is infinite. That's right. Wow. <laughs> this is great. So, what piece of advice would you give people to, to not bring into these disharmonies? So, so, the method you teach, I mean, how does it develop in people that they can heal themselves, that they can heal their family? Because I know, you know, you're one person, but you want everybody to be healthy. So, the more you can spread that around... Well, it would be easier uh, for the whole world, for me, so I don't have to work so hard. Um, it's teachable, so someone could actually learn it, and um, it's something that we already know. We just need someone to to guide the individual to uh, not be so conventional. To see the possibility of uh, of anything goes and the potential is is there, and uh, look at the possibility instead of impossibilities. So you say when you say the word conventional, what do you mean by that? I think that's important. Like how everybody else thinks. Like they have a limitation, they have this problem, they're always going to have this problem. So they have to change their mind, change their spirit, change their body. The infinite possi to the infinite possibilities. Right. There's more things we don't know than things we know. So, so we should not be limited by our conventional education, our conventional thinking, conventional uh, medicine. That's very limited. And and how did you come to that realization? I mean, was that over time that you become more firm? I mean, because I could say the same thing. And you know, as I had different experiences, the, the reality of the the infinite quality of the became more real to me. Well, it, it's really the application. So the more I could apply on someone and get the results, and it kind of reinforced that, and it's not just a just a workish thing. You know, it, it, it's really a, uh, what strikes me is, is the results you could get with it and not, you know, the, the, the description of what's going on. Okay? You don't want to talk about how to do it and not doing it. Okay? If you just do it, then we talk about how to do it. Right. I mean, you want to be able to manifest it. Right. Because <laughs> talk's cheap, as yep. we, we've seen many times on this planet we live on. It. So, it, you know, it's just amazing because, I mean, I've seen some videos of you doing healings, and it really is. It's, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, blows your mind, and yet we know it's possible. You know, we know that it's just possible. Well, actually, anyone could do it. So anyone could learn how to do it. It's just like using a computer, driving a car. So why don't you set, we'll have the video in a minute or so, but why don't you set what you're going to do? We have three people on the side set, the Motley crew, I must say, but we have three people who you're going to do healings on. So why don't you set how you're going to do it and, you know, if you have anything you'd like to, to set for, for the people. Well, I would just uh, feel where the weakness of the energy causing them to have whatever problem they have. So um, I would not know what to do till I Jeez, start so. feeding what's going on. Okay. So and, that's exciting, and it's good to not know what's going on and feel good about it. Right? Yeah, I understand exactly. Okay, so maybe what we'll do now is uh, do the second uh, video, the kung fu video again. Watch the movements and the the forms. It's uh, Cam Yoon and David Carradine, uh, and then the demonstrations of Cam and his students. So the kung fu video. The dragon represents the spirit. The spirit involves alertness, vitality, confidence, and a positive attitude. Of all the animals represented in Kung Fu, only the dragon is that of the imagination. 
This is significant because to develop the dragon within, one must use visualization. The mind must be conditioned to see the bright side of any situation, to positively affirm the future, to expect that wellness, harmony, and goodwill will prevail. Only with imagination can one achieve the highest levels of the art. In essence, one must have faith in the positive, unseen powers of the universe. One does not have to master some esoteric art to know the simple truth of Kung Fu, that the mind and the body work best when they work as one. Kung Fu is not a technique to be called upon only in an emergency, but a way to improve every aspect of your life. As with any art, the more it's practiced, the better the student becomes. But practice when your body wants to. Approach your relationship to Kung Fu as you would a courtship, getting to know it until you steadily build a genuine love for the art. I think right now is probably a good time to introduce our companion tape, David Carradine's Tai Chi workout. Tai Chi Chuan is an ancient form of self-development practiced by more people in the world than any other system of exercise. The moves are flowing and gentle, good for any age group or physical ability. The tape is divided into four sections. The first teaches basic stances. The second section explains Qi Kung, vital energy exercises which raise the level of your internal energy. The third section isolates each move and thoroughly explains the purpose, position, and execution thereof. The final stage demonstrates the complete Tai Chi form. The principles of Tai Chi will enhance your everyday life as well as your knowledge and practice of Kung Fu. Wasn't it? So now we're really fortunate and honored to have uh, Master Cam Yun do healings on Marcy, Kai, and Sue. Zai. <laughs> Marcy, you want to come up and, Thank you. and tell us uh, what's hurting you? Um, this arm just doesn't work. This arm works, uh -huh. and this arm doesn't work. Okay, you uh, feel a tightness or a pain here? Um, a, a tightness so that it doesn't move, it, and then pain. And even in, in playing with it before I got here, checking it out, then the whole area hurts. Okay. So you feel in your shoulder, but... It's not really coming from your shoulder. It's really coming from the deficiency of energy in your right hip. So I'm just going to change the energy right there for you. And what's inside are your right ovary, fallopian tube, and the uterus. So I'm just going to okay. strengthen those energy uh, weakness there. Take away the fear that you have about uh, relationship. So some relationship weakness energy. So I'll just clear it up for you, okay? All right, now move your arm, move your shoulder and see what it feels like. Okay, just rotate your shoulder and see what it feels like. Okay. Okay. So what does that feel? So it doesn't hurt. Okay. It doesn't move. All right. Okay. So how about going all the way back here? That's stiff, right? That hurts. Okay. So let's uh, correct you for going straight back, okay? Okay. So for you to move the arm back, mm -hmm. your right brain have to move the arm, okay? So if you don't have a right brain, then you don't have a problem. So we just need to change what's here in your right brain. Okay. All right. So we detox some influence from petrochemicals. So energy update, you can actually detox uh, petrochemicals from the nerve system. Okay. Okay, now move the arm back and see how you feel. Now, how does it feel when you go back? Uh... It hurts. Okay. It's still hurting. All right. Mm -hmm. So let's take away the hurt, okay? Now, 
the reason why it's hurting, you expect it to hurt. So mm -hmm. I'm just telling you that, but mm -hmm. I don't need to verbalize this. Mm -hmm. So you feel that your life should be painful. If you don't have any pain in your life, you feel uh, unnatural. So a natural mm -hmm. state of being for you is like, mm -hmm. is to have pain, okay? Now move the arm back, it's what it feels like. How's the pain feel now? Um, it still hurts. Okay, all right, yeah. now. Now how does that feel? I move it for you. It's, that, that doesn't hurt so much. All right, so going further back, right? Further back, okay. All right, so, Structurally, your arm is rotated this way and jam up also. So you have mm -hmm. a whole bunch of things going on here. Mm -hmm. So we have to correct you structurally as well. Okay. All right, now move back. Okay, reach, up, uh, reach back further now. Okay. Yes or no? You able to go further back? That's good. Okay, good. Okay, let me try this. Like. See, you don't like to it's bend better. your arm. Uh, okay. Especially left arm, you feel that somebody just give you one of those arm locks. You ever seen those? Um, like somebody give you yeah, arm lock, right? right. You don't like that, right? Um, so especially okay. your left arm, mm -hmm. you don't want to have that choice of putting your arm back here, okay? So okay. let me take away that choice, um, the fear of that choice. Okay, now just bend this arm. Okay. Come up, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is that better? That's better. I okay. can almost under my point. Right. Okay. So, um, how about just swinging back and forth? Okay. Or lift the arm up. Is that okay? That hurts. Back. That, okay. You say that hurts? I'm uh, going up. Oh, that hurts. Back. Okay, okay. so okay. let's let's correct that one. Okay. All right. Now lift it up again. Now, how's that feel? Okay, that doesn't hurt so much. Okay, good. So, every direction you say it hurts, uh -huh. I'm just going to correct you for that. That hurts. That hurts? Mm -hmm. Where? Right here? It hurts right in here. Okay. Okay. Now, what it means, you prefer going to the front and you don't like to go to the back. Right. So That's let me true. just correct you for that. Okay. So you don't want to go backwards with your life. So moving your arm backwards is like going backwards with your life. Okay. And you have a resistance to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now move backwards and see what it feels like. Do it faster. Your arm not going to come off. Okay. Never? You're right, but I don't want to go backwards in my life. <laughs> well, but, let's change your mind about that. Okay. You gotta step backwards once in a while, right? Okay. So let's correct you so it would be no issue if you go backwards. Okay. Sometimes you have to go backwards before you go forward. All right. Okay. Now think about going backwards again with your life. How's that feel? Hmm. Doesn't matter, right? I'm very resistant to that. Oh. But let me see what my arm does. Okay, my arm is working much better. But how do you feel mentally about going backwards with your life? Oh, absolutely not. Okay, you have to okay. change your mind about that. Okay. okay? So we, we're not just here to change your body, we want to change okay. your mind, so. Thank you. Okay, now think about going backwards with your life. Still an issue? This is really an issue. Okay, how about now? You're thinking about it, huh? I'm thinking about that. I just love going forwards. <laughs> All right, now going backwards. How do you feel? I wouldn't ever want to go backwards. Well, let's make it so it doesn't matter. You have to go backwards sometimes, okay. right? Okay. You've got to back out of your parking lot, right? That's true. So now, think, of, think about going backwards again. Hmm. How you feel about it? Not an option. Okay. I mean, I'd like to have it be an option. Okay, we just have to correct okay. you a little bit more, okay? Okay. Now, not just correct you mentally, but I have to uh -huh. correct you spiritually, okay? Okay. So, correct what's on your soul level, your high soul level. Okay. Okay, now, think about going backwards. What does that feel like? Mm. It's more blank. Yes. More neutral about it. Right. Good. Right. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. You improve, right? I can do this. Yeah. All right. Thank you. No, thank you. I'll think about going backwards. Don't think so much. No pain. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You want to come up and tell us uh, 
What bothers you? I have uh, neck pain and inner ear pain okay. of some kind that messes up my eye tracking. All right. Bumps so you feel face. pain in your neck right now, right? Yeah. So yeah. you think it's coming from your neck, but the pain is really coming from the front of your sacrum. All right. So we're just going to change the energy in the front of your sacrum for you. All right. This whole area. Weakness in this area. Okay. Now move your head and show your neck feel. What does that feel like? Better. Good. Got better. Look at your ears. Right? It bothers you? Mm hmm So you think your ears bothers you, but it's not really coming from your ears, it's coming from your hips. Since you can't see energy, let me just show you, mm -hmm. right? This may look like kinesiology, but it's not. Give me some strength, right? So if I stimulate your ears, not a problem. The energy stays strong enough, mm -hmm. right? If I stimulate your ears. Okay? Yeah. So let's change that, that weakness you have, okay? Now that's history. Sounds good. Right? Yeah. Now that's history, right? Yeah. Now, you're griefing about your hips. You're not griefing about your ears. When I say grief about your hips, I feel the energy shuts down. Okay? Yeah. Now let's correct that. Griefing about your hips no longer weakens you. Now, why are you griefing about your hips? Uh, yeah. Think about something about your mom you're grieving about. That's the, the exact issue. Think about your mom you grief about. You got it? Any experience with your mom you could be grieving about? Yeah. Okay. Get in touch with that. In touch with it, but don't tell us what it is. Mm -hmm. okay? That plus a thousand other experiences. Right? So we clear that for you from this by computer. Right? Now, once again, go back to your mom. How does she feel to you? Just show you on that. No issue, right? Doesn't sing today. Good. Seems to now, how's your ear feel? That seems to be all right. I just hope it. Move your head. Yeah. Make yourself out of balance. Shake your head. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about that. You worry about it? Okay. Yeah. See, when you're not worrying about it, uh -huh. that's when you worry about it. Okay. So let's correct that. You feel that you have to worry about it. So that's that is your issue. So it's not just a matter of lacking an energy. The energy is not supporting you um, in what you want, okay? So think about it again. You still worrying about it? I might be a little bit over the left. Okay, how about now? Okay. See, it right? <laughs> yeah. So when I move my hand, I just loosen up your DNA here, the uh -huh. memory of your DNA. Right? Thanks. Appreciate feel better? It. Yeah. Good. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Next victim. <laughs> Hi, what bothers you? Um, I broke my back about a year ago, so okay. I've been having a lot of numbness and pain. You got pain on the right side. Right side, right. mostly. Yeah. So, the right side pain is really come from your left hip. I, I'm just going to change the energy in your left hip and what's inside your left hip. Okay. And the fear that goes with it. Okay. All right. Now, how's your right side pain feel? It's hard to tell until I well, do things. You either but, you have a pain or you don't have a pain. Do something. Um, you have a two by four I could swing? <laughs> Bend forward and arch back. Do normal stuff, okay? If you no, have no I, pain, do normal stuff, then you have no pain when you work hard, okay? Yeah, okay. 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 It, How does it, it feel? It feels... Mm. See, you're surprised you could feel better this quickly. So Yeah, it's sort of gone. Okay, it's gone, yeah. Yeah, it's gone, so? Yeah. So what are you complaining about, Miss Garn? <laughs> right? So, um, you feel any numbness there at the moment? Uh, right now, no. Yeah. So what else are you complaining about? Um, I'm kidding. Oh, yeah, Her mortgage is too high. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? No, nope. think, about, think about one thing about men that bothers you in general. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to say it out loud. <laughs> Okay. You got it, right? <laughs> that plus 10,000 other reasons. <laughs> okay, so let's just deal with that. Well, now, go back to that one thing that bothers you about men. Now, uh, how does that feel compared to before? Uh, I forgot what it was. Good. Okay. <laughs> Change your mind, right? Uh-huh. So, yeah. okay, now, 
Punch back a little bit and move your torso. You feel comfortable with your back now? Um, it's sort of hurting in the center now. Okay, now when you go backwards or forward? Um, just when I move. Period. When you move? Yeah. Okay. So let's just correct you for moving. Uh, for moving. All right. It's really a moving problem, not a back problem. Okay. Because you have a back problem, you don't move, you will feel the pain. So I just correct you so you would like moving. Okay. It's almost like you'd like to be still and movement weakens you. Okay, yeah, how about now? Exactly. All right, yeah. now move it and see what it feels like. Mm, still there a little, yeah. Okay. Well, change your mind here, change your brain, uh, memory. Okay. Now move again. Mm -hmm. It's a little better, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Only a little bit better? Yeah. How about the thought of getting a lot better? Okay. That, right? okay. Well, that sounds great. It sounds good, but, mm -hmm. um, but you're kind of weak with that. Yeah. Uh, since we can't see energy, give me some strength. Nice and strong. The thought of getting a lot better is kind of like this, right? <laughs> the thought of getting a little bit better is like that, okay? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you just in reverse with your programming. All right. Now think about getting a lot better. How's that feel? Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, try to bring the pain back. It's still there a little bit. But okay. Not, not as bad. All right. Better. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. So let's take care of the little bit out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now do it again. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Okay. Good. Uh -huh. You disappointed? You don't have any more suffering pain? No, I'm not disappointed. <laughs> That's wonderful. Good. Okay. Give me a hug. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So we got some extra time. Do you want to do a second? Do you want to go around again? Do you think that would be of value? See how the arms are doing, the heads are... Are we able to bring somebody else in? Uh, probably it'll be a little more difficult more to do here. unless Diane. Okay. We could bring then, Diane in. Or we want to do Marcy again? Okay. A double, a double session for Marcy. Yeah. Hey, Tell what? Just move your head and how your neck feel to you. Good. You feel pretty loose, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. No tightness there. No tightness. Okay. But right, move it and you remember how it feels. Okay. Move it and remember how it Yeah, goes? because we want to make an improvement on that. Okay. Okay. Feels really good. All right. So even if it's good, we want to make it better. Okay. All right. So you feel your neck, but it's really come from your the tailbone. And actually the tail that missing over here. Uh-huh. So you have an issue about not having a tail back here. Uh-huh. So okay. let's correct that. You have an issue right. having it, you have an issue not having it. You have a tail? It bothers you. Okay. If you don't have it, it bothers you too. So uh, you can't win either. It's hard way. to win that way. Uh -huh. right. So let's loosen up that tail back here that is not here. Okay. okay. Now, move your head again. How does it feel compared before? It's not cracking. Improve, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now just remember how that feels, right? Mm -hmm. Let's make an improvement of that too, okay? Okay. So, energetically, we could we can improve the curve to your neck. We can improve each vertebrae. A C3 is the weakest uh -huh. uh, segment. Okay. Right. So let me just show it to you. Okay? Okay. Now C1, C2 is very strong, right? Yeah. The energy for C2 and C3, I mean C1 and C2 is very strong. C3 is weak. Ooh. Okay. Once again, C1 and 2, okay. C3. Uh -huh. So let's strengthen C3 for you. Now C3. Okay. okay. C3. Okay. All right. Now. The front of your spine to the back of your spine. Mm -hmm. That's a weakness between the two, front and back. Mm -hmm. So let's prep that front and back. Okay. Now it's nice and strong front and back. Okay. Top to bottom, bottom to top, and all that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now move your head again. It's how you Is that an improvement? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So depends how much you want to improve. You can mm -hmm. improve it. All the way down the back. Okay. okay. Now what's going on in your lower back? Any tightness there? No. No, bend forward and try to feel it. Good, Okay, arch back. How do you feel when you arch back? Feels okay. You didn't arch back yet. I didn't arch it? Oh, oh yeah. arch it. 
Uh-huh. That way. Uh-huh. Okay. Not further back. Further? Uh-huh. Is that further? Right? Further. It feels good. Okay. She's a gymnast now. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't feel any stiffness? No, I don't. Uh, how about your hips? No. Okay. Then you're all right then. All right. I'm healed. Right. Thank, thank, thank you. you. And my arms better too. Thank okay. you. Okay. That's I up. I called him by the wrong name before, so he deserves a second one. All right. Now, what you're feeling that's not as good as you want it to be? Um, this this part or in the high part it's of tender. the neck. Yeah, it's very huh. very okay. tender. Okay. Say that. All right. You feel it there. Yeah. But it's really coming from your right SI joint. Okay. So. Let me indicate it to you again, all right? With this arm test mm -hmm. or muscle test. I'll give him some strength. See, right there, your energy is very strong. But right there. There? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, that's strength there for you. Mm -hmm. Now, that weakness is history. Okay, now how's the tendons they feel? Here, it feels, uh -huh. feels good. It's yeah, good. This side. Oh, yeah, another one on this yeah, side. Yeah. You didn't tell me that. Sides, yeah. Yeah, right here. moving right. target yeah. he's got for you. Which side? I got it everywhere. Up here or down here? Uh, up, up high, right? Kind okay. Up okay. there. All right. Now, up there does not come from there because your energy up there is very strong. The weakness is really from here. Okay? Mm -hmm. If I tap you here, you don't have weakness, but if I tap you there, you do. Right? Mm -hmm. So now that's history also. Now, what caused that weakness? It's grief. Grief about what? Grief about your past. Yeah. Think about something in your past you grief about. Oh, weak, right? So let's clear that. All right, now it's the right side of your neck feel. That's fine. Just move it. Throw your head out. I mean, throw your neck out of place. Are you able to do that? It feels a little tight, but it's not hurting. It feels tight? Huh, you didn't tell me that, so well, that's no, the tightness, just... right? Because you have a weakness to be loose. So it's a choice you make because when you think about being loose, it actually weakens you to be loose. Okay? Now, once again, think about being loose. That you could be loose. Weakens you. So that's correct then. To be loose, you be nice and strong. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now move it again so you'll be still tight. Much better. Okay. So just remember how it feels. Mm -hmm. You want to improve it even more, all right? Mm -hmm. Just move it and just remember how it feels. Okay. You remember, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm not going to work on your neck. I'm just going to work, do some correction in the front of your sacrum. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you change the energy down there, make it looser there, and also tailbone, the extension of the tailbone. All right, now move your head again. See if it's any better than before. Yes. Okay, good. All right, how much more better do you want? Well, more. We got time. <laughs> One more better. Okay. All right. So just remember how it feels. You can make it lighter. You could remove the calcium from these joints here. Energetically, let the calcium come out of this area improve the hydration and uh, balance you more from front to back, from left to right, from bottom to top, external to internal, and internal to external. Okay, now move again. Is that an improvement? Big time. Yeah. What else you want to improve? Wow. That's it. Thank you very okay. much. That shows you that you can improve whatever function you have and not have to feel like you have to limit yourself to what you have. Okay. You want to come up and see what else we do I for you? I think we're coming to the end. I think she's she got her shot. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, you know, we're coming to the end of the show. I mean, it was an incredible experience. So if you're in the Santa Barbara area around, you know, May, the May 7th period, the next couple of weeks, Santa Barbara, Ojai, uh, call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. You'll look in the news press, the Independent. All the dates and times are there. And you can get their free, their free workshops, free healings. They're just extraordinary. So, I mean, you saw it as well as I did. And it's time we, you know, healed the heart. 
and get to the love. Good night. God bless you. Thank you.